Wait a minute. Pitcher attributes. Obviously, pitchers have attributes of their own, like hitters, and I feel like many of us don't have an easy way to quantify or visualize how important certain attributes are. Obviously, we have attributes like contact and power as hitters, which can kind of be directly correlated to how many home runs they hit or how many hits they get. Pitchers, on the other hand, I find that many of the things are kind of tough to look at other than velocity, break, and just the pitch mix of pitchers. So today, we're gonna go through, we're gonna go on a deep dive into some of the pitching attributes, mainly hits in case per nine, go through and try to see how valuable they actually are. I'm gonna go through what I did to test this out and go through all the visual examples I have. We could try to really visualize to see how much of an impact these attributes have for pitchers. Let's get into it. We are back with another deep dive video. All you guys who are brand new to the channel may be seeing me for the first time and you don't know me. My name is Scan. I do upload a lot of other tips in MLB The Show to help you all get better at the game. If you're new to the game this year or just looking to get better, we have a lot of tips catered to everyone. So if you're looking for all of that, make sure you hit that sub button down below. Um, I know a lot of you guys may have ran into some of my videos before at some point this year. So make sure you remember to hit that sub button and take a look around the channel see what else you like. Also, a lot of time goes into these videos, like I kind of premise with the last couple of videos we made. I've spent hours recording and screenshotting footage today just for this video. So if you guys do enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And finally, if you have any more questions, if you wanna watch me play the game, make sure you come swing by the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash scan. Best place to find me outside of the videos here if you wanna come hang out, ask me questions about the game, so on and so forth. But now let's get into the deep dive Let's go over the general basics of pitching attributes, go through what they actually do. First, we have our stamina. Um, stamina is how long a pitcher can stay in the game, how many pitches they could throw. Obviously, with energy, you have that energy bar. As the bar goes down and down and down, pitchers lose effectiveness, especially when they go from the green to yellow area of energy. So having more stamina allows you to pitch longer, more effectively. Hits per nine. It affects the size of your inner PCI. So contact is the hitter's attribute that makes this bigger or smaller, but also it can be negated by the pitcher's hits per nine. So a higher hits per nine will make this PCI on the same hitter smaller than it would be against another pitcher who has a lower hits per nine. K's per nine is similar to hits per nine, but it actually affects the outer PCI. K per nine, or strikeouts per nine, is the attribute that affects the outer. So your outer PCI is your foul ball region. This is where you foul off balls more so than not. Here is your good contact region. This is where you square up the ball normally. So this makes your outer PCI smaller so you're not fouling off as many balls and you swing and miss more. Your walks per nine is like directly tied into control usually. It makes you walk players more to play. You have less control. Um, I have a tough time actually learning about this. I don't know how to test this. Homers per nine does not have any effect in online Diamond Dynasty play but it is the homers that give up per nine innings. In offline play you know you usually get slower exit velocities hit against this pitcher and they won't be hit as hard normally. Um, pitching clutch is the size of that perfect area region or just how much they control when runners are on base or when they give up hits. So a higher pitching clutch allows them to have more control after giving up walks, hits, so on and so forth. Control, obviously, is how much control they have, how precise they can aim the ball. Velocity is how hard they're throwing the ball. And break is how much the ball moves. But these three, I think, are best quantified by the pitches. Up on the right, if you hit R3 or the right stick, you can see the individual pitch attributes. Those are better measures of how a pitcher is. You know, this is just a, like a cumulative rating. Um, so looking at this, I feel like is usually better indication of how good a pitcher's pitches actually are. But we're gonna mostly look at hits and Ks per nine today. These are the ones that have been the talk of the town, especially with this Pedro Martinez. Some people think that 102 hits per nine is kind of low based on the kind of pitcher he was. And I'll get my opinions at the end of the video. We're gonna go through and actually see how much of an impact these two attributes are and really see how much you should be focusing on them when choosing pitchers. So while having a good pitch mix and stuff, I think is the biggest deal. Um, let's look at these screenshots I took and really see if we could visualize how much of a difference these different attributes have on a hitter. So what I did 
is first of all there were three hitters selected and three pitchers selected for each test um they each have different contact ratings so we get a different visual of the pci and then for the k's per nine tests we did different visions so different vision ratings for the hitters because that's what's being affected we're going to bounce around between different pitchers you're going to see the overlay change we have three different hitters so you could visualize how much with higher contact or lower contact players the pci actually moves and we're going to go through and actually visualize this um so we'll start off with the hits per nine test three hitters that we used cal ripkin the 42 series he has 80 contact versus righties JT Real Muto, the all-star card, not the, the 98 overall, the 97 overall in Team Affinity, has 100 contact versus righty. Vlad Jr., my version at least, has 125 contact with parallels. I don't know what his starting attribute is, but that's what I tested with. 42 series, Bob Gibson has 80 hits per nine. The monthly award, Tyler Glass now, is exactly 100 hits per nine. Lucas Giolito, his no-hitter card has 120 hits per nine. You see each overlay has different PCIs. They're labeled by the colors here. So you can see how much higher or lower contact players change. And I wanna emphasize this at the start, focus on when I am changing the overlays, how much the PCIs get bigger or smaller. That's what you wanna look at. See if you can visualize the difference in the movements. You can see the overall trend with the different contact players. It's kind of like a linear thing. So it usually changes the same amount per se as the different pitchers are being changed. So let's look at 80 hits per nine. At this point in the game, most pitchers don't have 80 hits per nine. This is kind of like the start of year attribute for many pitchers. And most people aren't using pitchers with attributes like this at this point, I would say. But this is worth noting in like BR if you're choosing pitchers and all that. Then we jump up to 100 hits per nine. So again, look at the difference between the two. Here on All-Star Difficulty, when you're looking at this inner PCI, I feel like I'm not seeing much of a difference. Like, this isn't game-changing. This on All-Star Difficulty isn't the biggest deal to me. This is just kind of what the what has gone on throughout the year. Edward Cabrera has around 100 hits per nine. A lot of, like, the better pitchers for the last few months have had right around 100 hits per nine. So, you know, I don't think this is the, the biggest difference, but, you know, take a look at the difference, see if you pick up on it. Now, we'll jump from 100 to 120 hits per nine. This is the difference between the two. As you see, um, especially the yellow and red PCI, I feel like this is kind of a bigger deal. Like this PCI is almost reaching the edge of the strike zone. And this one kind of drops down here. But it's, this is definitely a bigger deal for the lower contact guys. Um, like this, this will allow them to square up more balls. This is probably the difference between a lazy fly out to the infield or a warning track power. To you it was squaring up a ball more often this is an all-star difficulty though the pcis are generally big so again i don't think this is the biggest deal on all-star just because again it's already so big and you know easier to time pitch speeds there that hits per nine isn't the biggest change to me but you can see the difference there is definitely a significant difference between 20 hits per nine on all-star now we'll move on to hall of fame start with the 80 hits per nine this kind of looks a lot like the 120 hits per nine on All-Star. No one's gonna be using pitchers like this at this point in the year. This is the jump between 80 and 100. And um, on Hall of Fame, this is definitely a bigger deal. Um, Hall of Fame, a lot of times you're gonna end up playing it when you're pushing for World Series or playing in 700 to 899 rating and rank. When you're playing people who are not as good at that difficulty, this could be kind of a big deal with how many balls they square up. Again, this jump isn't the one I want to focus on. I want to focus on the difference between 100 and 120. This is what a lot of people are talking about with that Pedro Martinez, for example. I think this is definitely somewhat of a difference on Hall of Fame. This isn't like the biggest PCI change, especially with the high contact players. I would mostly focus on the yellow and the blue PCIs on this visual because that is who most people use on Hall of Fame difficulty. Usually they don't use players 80 or below contact. And obviously this is a big deal for those low contact players, but I find most people use 100 or so contact at least on Hall of Fame and Legend difficulty. And especially if you look at the yellow PCI, I think this is a sizable difference. This is a somewhat noticeable jump. And if you are someone who is looking at Pedro Martinez as an example, this is what Pedro Martinez should be around around that PCI size for 100 hits per nine because he has 102 hits per nine. This is 120. 
Um, and not that many players have 120 plus hits per nine. Um, the only ones that I know of off the top of my head that are starters are like Felix Hernandez, Al Leiter with some parallels, and that Nolan Ryan card. That Nolan Ryan has 125 hits and Ks per nine. So that man's PCIs are going to be P-Uni. Um, but this is what the difference is, and it's definitely a sizable difference in Hall of Fame. Where this is the biggest deal, I would say, is Legend difficulty. Um, if you're someone that plays on Legend consistently, it's obviously a big deal because Legend has the highest skill gap. Um, the best players in the game play well on Legend, while even people who are consistent World Series players can struggle on Legend just because of the, how high the skill gap is with the high pitch speeds. And you see with 80 hits per nine, that's looking like a Hall of Fame PCI with some of these players. Not the biggest deal for sure. Um, you definitely don't want to be using someone with 80 hits per nine on Legend. If you're playing Legend, you probably want to maximize this attribute as much as you can to really punish those people who aren't as good. 100 hits per nine? This is like about what I feel like I'm used to on Hall of Fame or Legend. Um, this is about par for the course on Legend for me. You see that PCI is definitely small. Like, it's not big at all. And like, again, you look at that yellow-blue region. Definitely a difference between this and this. Like, no doubt. But I would feel a lot more confident, especially with the blue PCI hitter. But now we look at the difference between 100 and 120, which is going to be a big deal as we move on to the end game here. Look at where this yellow one is at 100 hits per nine. This is the, the blue hitter with 120. Basically, a 100 hits per nine pitcher, a hitter with 100 contact, which is usually like the normal on Legend difficulty, that becomes the normal for a 125 contact hitter. And so for the few pitchers that do have really good hits per nine like this, this is kind of a big deal, I would say. On Legend difficulty, where some people are going to struggle on those higher pitch speeds and with PCIs like this, it's just going to compound their issues. This is going to make it even more difficult. And now imagine Nolan Ryan with 125, this gets even smaller. Look at the difference again. The smaller PCIs are the ones on 120 hits per nine. The bigger ones are the ones on 100. There's a sizable difference. Uh, on Legend difficulty, I definitely would think this is the biggest deal. So that is the hits per nine test. Now let's look at the Ks per nine before we make any sort of final conclusions. Um, this is what it looks like on um, the three pitchers that were used. were 97 Craig Kimbrell has 125 Ks per nine. Pablo Lopez, the 94 overall, has 100 Ks per nine. And Gold Simeon Woods Richardson has exactly 80. So it just all kind of adds up with the increments a bit. The hitters that were chosen, 94 Jaron Duran has 80 vision. Trey Turner, at least when I have him up, four parallels gets 100 vision. Jackie Robinson gets 123 vision when he's four parallels up. So we're not talking maximum vision. First of all, that's not very common, 125 vision. Jackie Robinson is one of the highest visions of players I've seen in the game. With this, even at this point in the game, I find a lot of hitters don't have near 125 vision. A lot of them are around 100. And if you're someone looking at relevant players, that new Matt Kemp that dropped has significantly less than 80. So this vision attribute is kind of over the place. So this is gonna be a different visual in comparison to say the other one we were testing hits for nine. Also remember your outer PCI is your foul ball region. Um, I think this is not a big deal on All-Star cause that center PCI is so big for many players. Probably gonna hit that PCI more so than anything unless for some reason you're struggling or you have some really bad hand-eye coordination, which Listen, it happens to the best of us. But looking at our PCIs here, this is the this is what we have with 80 Ks per nine on all star difficulty. We again focus on just the outer. Ignore this inner here. This isn't relevant. Um, the only thing that's kind of relevant, the, the contact rating could make this a little bigger. But I chose these three players because they're all within 10 contact of each other. So this PCI isn't that much of a change. Um, so it shouldn't affect the outer that much, but keep in mind Jackie Robinson does have 121 contact in comparison to 114 and 112 for the other two. So this difference could be a little bit bigger just because that higher contact. Um, I don't think it's the biggest deal though. But this is the outer PCI. This is BR for you. <laughs> That's what this is. The difference between 80 and 100 Ks per nine. Look at the outer PCI movement. All-star again, this isn't a big deal. I really don't think this is game changing. This is what it looks like. 100 to 125 Ks per nine at this point in the game again, I feel is around 90 to 125. So you, this is just gonna affect your foul balls. And on All-Star here, again, I really don't think with many hitters, people are gonna struggle with big outer PCIs like this on All-Star. It's really easy to foul off anything. 
Um, the real thing you're gonna have to use to get strikeouts is timing on all star. You have to really get people late on the ball. That's really what I like to do. Cause you're gonna get a lot of foul balls with those adder PCIs that big. Now we look at Hall of Fame. And this is where things definitely get a little bit more interesting. Remember, only look at the outer PCI in 80 Ks per nine. Not really viable at this point, I would say, but you know, it is a thing. Um, this is the difference between 80 and 100. Once you get to 100 on Hall of Fame, you definitely see this difference. I'm like, at this part in the game, again, I think this is a bigger deal for those people who are fringe World Series players making a World Series push. If you're not great with your PCIs, you will get more swings and misses with those higher Ks for nine pitchers on Hall of Fame, especially. And this is the difference between 100 and 125. Definitely a sizable difference. Like, look at how small this is, man. <laughs> it's definitely like a somewhat big deal, I would say. On Hall of Fame is definitely gonna be the most noticeable for this. It's definitely gonna be that type of thing where you're gonna notice it there over All-Star. This is the difference again between a swing and a miss and the foul ball for many hitters. If you're someone who struggles, you're facing a really good pitcher in the Hall of Fame. Definitely a somewhat big deal with the Ks per nine. Finally, we look at Legend. This is 80 Ks per nine. <laughs> this is exactly why you don't use someone with this low of a Ks per nine on Legend. Because the, the good players see a PCI this big on Legend, they're gonna feast on you. Um, This is 100 Ks per nine is about what you would normally see now, I would say. So about par for the course. And then this is when you drop 125. Again, look at that difference. Look at how much the outer PCI moves. On legend difficulty, it's very viable to get swings and misses, especially when most people are gonna be sitting around yellow with their vision ratings. Um, you combine a really good hits and Ks per nine, you are looking really good. Like that Nolan Ryan could be really nasty on Legend if you can really mix up pitches well. And yeah, those are the tests. Those are the visuals. First, before I even get to my opinions, comment down below what you think. Before I even say anything about it, do you think this is something that you would account for? Which one do you think is more important? Hits or Ks per nine? Like what difficulty do you play on? Do you think this is gonna affect you and how you play the game? Or is this something that maybe some people who are playing at that high level are the only ones that should really care about? Definitely let me know in the comment section now. Type that out right now before I even give my opinion. All right, great, thank you. Thank you for your opinion. I'm gonna be reading these comments very much. But now that we went through the test, do I think they are a big deal? Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's very difficult to pitch effectively with someone with a low hits or Ks per nine on Hall of Fame or Legend. Like on Hall of Fame, I feel like it would be very annoying to use someone with a low Ks per nine, but you can never get that put away pitch. It's tough to get those strikeouts. And I like to change up timing and things so but the difference between 100 and 125 case per nine i think is definitely a somewhat sizable difference um same with 100 and 120 hits per nine um looking back at this obviously i i'm playing on legend a fair bit because i get world series kind of quick um you look at the difference between these two on legend i definitely think this is a big deal like if you're playing someone who's not good on legend this is definitely a big deal i i heard a lot of people were, were very outspoken wishing pager had a higher hits per nine and a fair amount of those people were players who play on legend normally at least from my knowledge so i could see why this is a big deal you gotta do whatever you can to get pci smaller on legend the bigger pci that your opponent has the less skill that's involved and you probably want to do that minimizing of other factors on legend when you're really really good and consistently playing on it trying to make top 50. Hall of Fame, I don't know if it's as big of a deal for Hall of Fame as some may make of it. This is the difference. Um, if you look at the yellow PCI, that's mostly what I wanna focus on. This may be the difference between giving up a fluky homer and the uh, weak flyouts. Cause a lot of people are gonna be using 100 contact players, not that many 125 contact. But overall, I think it's a sizable thing. Like you look at Pedro Martinez, was kind of our case study this video. Um, I think the 115 case for Ryan's solid. And if you're someone who really enjoys Pedro, I truly think you can pitch effectively with it. I don't care what anyone says. I think this card is good. I think Pedro could have been better though. Like I think based on the pitcher Pedro was, it could have easily given him like 110, for example, hits per nine. And that still would have been a good little underplay, give him a reason to release him early. But the reason I think they went with a Sig Series card and made him this way is to release him right now. Like, I feel like if they did make him better, then we would have had to wait longer for him. 
I think if they released a Pedro looking like this, or if they gave him a cutter, they had attributes like this. I think he would be like no doubt like the best pitcher in the game and in terms of like inning bosses like that. I don't know if they want to do that with inning bosses. Like, I don't know if they want to make those players the best for the rest of the year so i think that's the balancing act of it and i think there's more of it that went into it than many of us think it is what it is hopefully next year pedro is even better but we got to get a hold of him test him see how he plays i'm personally excited to get him and use him despite that hits for nine even though i know he probably could have and should have been better but that's gonna be it for this video i hope you all enjoyed um this is a nice little deep dive into the pitching attributes i feel like it's tough to kind of visualize this and yeah like i said before make sure you like the video if you enjoyed if you like the visuals um like i said a lot of time goes into this i've been spending all of my saturday on this so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's fun doing this stuff. And I will definitely be doing more here and there as the uh, the days go on. You all have a great rest of your day. See you all again in the next one. Deuces.